So good morning and welcome to the development of new skills in the automotive sector event. In the framework of the European Week of Regions and Cities, this side event will provide an exchange of knowledge and good practices between three regions to develop the necessary skills for a sustainable and fair transition in the automotive industry. To begin with, Anaoyo, Vice President and Regional Minister for Historical Memory and Coexistence, External Action and Basque of the Government of Navarra, will introduce the event. Anna? Thank you very much, Christina. Good morning. I would like to begin by thanking the team of the delegation of the Government of Navarra in Brussels for the organization of this very interesting conference in total development of new skills in the automobile sector, which is especially important for Navarra and especially important in the year 2023, the European Year of Skills. This day is part of the events organized by the General Director of External Action through the delegation in Brussels in the week we are in the European Week of City and Regions. The commitment to detect early lines of work beneficial to our community and to align our policies with Europe leads us as a government to promote work in this area, in which the Navarra delegation in Brussels is fundamental since monitors, explores, and transmits in a simple way the enormous amount of information that emanates from the European capital because we want to be present in Europe with our own voice, but also for Europe to be present in our daily lives. We are blessed to come together in events like today, a day in which we will address the development of new skills in the automobile sector during this European Year of Skills, declared in 2023 by the President of the European Commission. As currently more than three quarters of companies in the European Union report that they have difficulty finding workers with the necessary skills, and the latest figures for Eurostat indicate that only 37% of adults receive training in regular. Therefore, due to the importance of this topic, we have a leisure panel with the director of legislative work of the European Committee, Thomas Gumen, will present the Route 35 initiative, an initiative of the Internal Market Commissioner, Jerry Breton, and to whom, by the way, in a month we, have, have, we will have in Pamplona which brings together the main actors in the automotive sector to study the best implementation of the new mobility model and how to face the ecological uh, transition in the automotive sector and issues that concern us here in Navarra. In addition, we are lucky to have experience from Italy and France with Folco Tulli, Green Deal and Economy Advisor of the Brussels Delegation of the Lombardy Region, and with Cedric Daumus, Director of the Circular Industry Campus of the French Region Ile de France, as well as from the DG of Vocational Training of the Government of Navarra, Sonia Garcia will explain to us that we are doing in Navarra in this area. Finally, I don't want to finish without reinforcing the message of the importance of interest groups that, such as the Alliance of Automotive Regions, of which in a month Navarra will assume the presidency of the aid, and together with the 34 regions with industry automotive sectors that will make up, we will work so that European aspect that directly changes us, such as the entry into force of the U7 regulation or the request for the creation of a new financial instrument, just transition fund to wine soil. <clears throat> because we have a lot of as the state, we are going to continue developing the loving work that we have been doing in Europe for the good of our community. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Anna. So now, Thomas Wolven, Director for the Legislative Works of the Committee of the Regions, will set up the scene and explain the Route 35 initiative. Thomas, thank you. 
Yes, first of all, thank you. And uh, thank you, Vice President Orlo, for your uh, uh, introduction. It's a great pleasure for me to be here. It's my first European Week the Cities uh, Regions event. So uh, really looking forward to it. And the topic is more uh, um, uh, almost, uh, most important for not just these three regions, but for Europe uh, as such. There's a recent OECD study which looks at skills forecasts, and it is very clear that um, the debate about the transition is very often only looking at jobs and not at skills uh, as such. And um, it is also important to really clarify what skills are needed for the, for the transition in the future and that this can only take place at a, with place-based solutions. So that's why this event is very important because it offers three different angles on the transition challenge for automotive regions. We will hear something on the um, uh, on an OEM transition. We see we will have a more global approach and a more policy approach in this. And I think this is very important for the committee of the regions. Uh, this is crucial because the transition of the automotive sector has a clear link to the Green Deal. And um, it needs to be done in a way that uh, the the, uh, the the places involved have the right means uh, to do so and uh, support this place-based solution. That's why we facilitated as a committee of the regions, the Automotive Regions Alliance, and uh, Vice President Olio has already said that um, uh, Navarra will uh, take the presidency very soon, uh, and that this um, uh, alliance is also a response to the lack of uh, territorial impact assessment in the in the proposals the Commission has put forward uh, as part of the Green Deal. Uh, the uh, Automotive Regions Alliance uh, wants uh, that this transition has been supported, that uh, the question of territorial cohesion has uh, been, uh, been focused on, and that uh, this transition needs the acceptance of the people on the ground uh, in order to make it uh, successful. And it's not uh, only an ecological question, but also a question of uh, economically and uh, social sustainability in this way. Um, this has been uh, recognized in the legal act for the end of the combustion engine in the zero emission uh, uh, act. Uh, the, the ARA, the Automotive Regions Alliance, is been uh, re referred to and that the Commission uh, needs to develop uh, a clear plan how, how these regions uh, are doing, how they are developing and how this um, is being reflected in future uh, funding instruments uh, for, for these regions. Um, uh, the ARA is also been closely involved in the uh, development of transition pathways for mobility eco uh, ecosystems. And of course, and this is what I wanted to raise, also was invited to take part in the Route 35 working group, which was established by Commissioner Breton in December 2022. Um, in this uh, co concept of this Route 35, uh, which is uh, bringing together the stakeholders, but also the cities and regions, uh, Commissioner Breton has suggested five uh, key performance indicators, how to measure the transition of the sector, its impact, um, and its uh, its progress and uh, looking very much on charging infrastructure on the right skills on the raw materials and the uh, affordability uh, but we also said this needs also to be added a uh, 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 sixth uh, uh, key performance indicator on how the regions are doing that are most affected by it, how the automotive regions are, uh, are, are being, um, uh, uh, how, how, how they are able to make this place-based transformation. And um, we have uh, suggested to uh, the commissioner that uh, we identify the challenges, the vulnerabilities, and the progress of the regions in such a system. And uh, we have um, made, um, uh, let's say, a strong plea that uh, um, this uh, needs to be done in a close collaboration at all levels of governance between the regional, national, and the European level. Um, 
the the Route 35 uh, approach is currently being reviewed. Um, uh, the meetings are uh, at the moment on hold, but however, we have uh, we really uh, have delivered key messages to this process in the recent months. We need just transition plans uh, that should be drawn up by the end of 2025. And this requires a territorial impact assessment uh, so that uh, this is been done in a coherent way. Uh, we also suggested to take uh, experiences from the phasing out of the coal regions in 19, uh, 2018 when the uh, Joint Research Center prepared a study for DGNA on this and a, a, a similar um, a strategy, could, uh, a, a scientific assessment who are the uh, uh, automotive regions? How are they doing? What is their progress? Uh, it's very important. It's also important to say we are not asking, looking at an industry which is in decline. We hope not, uh, but in transformation. And then we uh, we suggested an additional key performance indicator that looks in, in how this has been done. We are at the Committee of the Region are currently preparing an own initiative opinion, which will be voted this week uh, during the European week on the just and sustainable transformation in the automotive regions. And this is also been done in close collaboration with uh, the European Parliament, because in a parliament, uh, there is also an ongoing uh, report in the Reggie Committee. And we hope that we work hand in hand um, um, in this uh, direction. Um, we uh, we see this as an important uh, part of the uh, cooperation, and uh, of course um, we look at um, uh, the joint cooperation with uh, these regions, but also particularly with uh, the Navarra region because of the presidency of ARA, and we are looking forward to uh, the meeting on the 9th of uh, uh, November in uh, in Pamplona because this is very important that we really link the experiences made in the regions, and we will hear of three great examples uh, later on with the policy making at the European level in view also of the new instruments to support the uh, just and fair transition and uh, addressing the automotive, uh, the challenge of automotive regions is one of it. And uh, the committee stands by these regions and we will um, also shortly adopt an opinion on the future of cohesion policy, where we also make a clear link to this to this challenge. So, in this sense, I wish this meeting a success, a very uh, good uh, uh, inspiration and good ideas, which could be used for other regions. And I'm looking forward to the further discussion. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Thomas. And now we'll start with the regions. Volko Tulli, uh, Green Deal and Economy Advisor from the Brussels Delegation of the Lombardy Region, will explain their practices. Volko, whenever you're ready. Sorry, we can't, we can't hear you. No, we don't hear you, sorry. No. What about? Yes, now, now we now you can. Yes. Good. Always after three or four years using this system, we always have problem on uh, on these. Now, thank you very much. I would like to to thank uh, Vice President Toyo and uh, the colleagues uh, from Navarra for this nice opportunity, and Thomas for his. Uh, uh, wide and very uh, cool introduction. Uh, as you said, uh, I work for Regional Lombardia and uh, I am uh, among the thing in the Sherpa group of the Automotive Regional Alliance. And I would like to give you, let's say, some uh, uh, the, the point of view uh, of, uh, of an institution that has to deal with this uh, challenge that Thomas uh, uh, mentioned before. In fact, uh, the transition toward the zero emission and digitalized vehicles uh, will have an impact uh, the regional automotive ecosystems and our socioeconomic structure. Just to give you uh, some specific figures for Lombardia, 
uh, we have right now something like 1,000 industry, more or less 50,000 employees, and 20 billions of turnover in the automotive sector. And as we are standing now uh, for the legislation and for the perspective, the actual perspective is to lose by 2035 about 20, 25,000 jobs in the region if we are not able to change the situation. And I have to tell you, that is the reason why we strongly believe in the importance of technological neutrality and alternative fuels to reach the net zero goals. In fact, in our opinion, these will allow us not only to save the jobs, but also to maintain Europe as a worldwide leader of the automotive sector. Leadership, yes. Whatever will be the choice at the political level, only using electric or technological neutrality, uh, the backbone for keeping this leadership are skills, which is the uh, important topic of, uh, of today. And uh, I think my role today is to give you from the side of the region, what we have done, what we are doing uh, on the skill fields. And uh, uh, on that, we started working, uh, I should say quite early, uh, even before knowing that 2023 and 2024, because it started a little later, uh, would have been the European year for skills. And we start working, uh, in 2020 at regional level and at the European level. Uh, in fact, these allowed us to be the first region uh, to, to sign and to, to have approved the Regional Pact for Skills by the European Commission. It was uh, last November, uh, really the, the, the day uh, of the first Automotive Regional Alliance Conference uh, when we were in Leipzig. Uh, but before these uh, uh, original path for skills recognized by the European Commission, we uh, started uh, working at regional level uh, with our regional clusters and uh, other uh, actors for the regional path for skills, and we supported these uh, with some uh, regional funds and uh, institutional activities. Uh, then uh, with the new uh, financial framework, with the new financing period, our regional ministry for industry decided to use some ERDF funds directly for skills. I mean, we have uh, the social funds and we use it. We have a chapter devoted to upskilling and reskilling, but also ERDF, we have decided to use it and we have a regional measure called Support Skills Development for Industrial Transition, which has not a very big amount, but it's something that demonstrates the importance uh, as Regione Lombardia we give to skills as a transversal pillar for uh, the industrial uh, uh strengthen uh so we we have put on that seven million euros but also uh we are founding member together with stuttgart of the regions group within the automotive skill alliance if i'm not wrong uh, thomas mentioned it we are working together uh in the uh, together with the automotive regional alliance the Automotive Skill Alliance is something very important, very big, where all the most important industrial group are, very important to universities. And we started uh, with the regions. Uh, I have to say something. Why the regions? Because there, there, there are two very important things. The first one is that we are the nearest institutions to the cities and, and to the industries. We are the, the real link between national or European uh, decision makers and the life, the daily life of our citizens. And the second one is also because we have the money through the European Social Fund and the RDF, we have the money to implement these, uh, these policies. And then last but not least, uh, I, I had mentioned it and uh, Thomas 
designed it very well. Uh, we are honored to be part of the Automotive Regional Alliance, but not only, only to be part, but also uh, to be the foreseen chair for 2025 uh, after our friends of Navarra. We, we will be uh, in Pamplona the 9th of November, and we uh, are very keen to start uh, uh, to, to continue, let's say, working together with them and with the uh, Saxon, which has the uh, actual uh, presidency. So, um, to finalize my very short uh, uh, draw about the, the, the role of the region, we are supporting as much as we can these transitions, this transition and the skill as the most important tools for it. Trying to implement at regional level the EU regulatory framework, but also investing resources and facilitating public and private partnership to reach the goal in front of us, which is save and increase good jobs and keep European industry at the forefront of automotive sector. Thank you very much. Thank you, Foco. And now we go to Ile de France. Uh, Sylvie Artir de Genest, Operational Director of Campus Circular Industry, will give us an insight of the work. Sylvie, when you're ready. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Is it okay? Yes. 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 Uh, I was wondering whether we could share the presentation I had sent. Christina, I'm not sure you if you have it or you prefer me to, sh to share the slides. If you can share it, uh, that's that's good. It's better. Okay. Yeah, maybe it's better. Oh, uh, I need. Uh, okay. Can you see it? No. No. Allora. There. Yes. Good. Uh, thank you for the invitation, the introductions, and and the and the previous presentation for co interesting. And I'm gonna <clears throat> present you the um, uh, refactory project, which is uh, which was launched in 2020 by the Renault Group to actually transform a Flans plant, which is an automotive plant that. Was, um, that was uh, manufacturing new cars for 70 years. And that was decided in 2020 by the board of directors uh, not, to, um, not to manufacture any longer um, new vehicles, but to be transformed, rather to shut it down, to be transformed in a circular economy uh, site, industrial site dedicated to mobility. The automotive plant in 2021 was producing Zoe and Micra with, with two model types and is located 40 kilometers away of Paris, just for you to have a, a view and, and an idea of the project. And it was decided that we had four years, the, the whole project team, to uh, organize the stop of production. Sorry, the, the whole project team and the plant. Uh, there were two different teams uh, for, for um, conducting the project. And we had four years to stop, to organize the stop of production and to implement circular activities fully operational, operational on an industrial site. Just for you to have an idea, um, it's uh, 40 kilometers away of Paris and 200, uh, 230 uh, hectares. Sorry, I have the French word, I don't have the English one. Hopefully you understand. Um, the refactory project then is was organized and set up in a few weeks and months, let's say it so, and it's... Um, Organized, organizing the plant on four pillars that you have um, presented here on the screen, um, which are more or less um, summarizing three of, of them at least, uh, summarizing the seven pillars you have in sustainability and in, in circular economy models type, especially within and back after. Um, first one 
is about extending um, the life of vehicles, which is extending the life of products, uh, with uh, renovation and reconditioning vehicles. It is organs and parts. Okay, so it's um, called uh, Factory VO, uh, second-hand vehicles uh, factory, and also the heavy body work. On second pillars, you have the re-energy, which is um, dealing with uh, the batteries, the energy, and the new type of green energies that um, can be discovered. And here we are dealing with the, the storage solution and the development of battery, electrical batteries and hydrogen uh, products. Third pillar, recycle. Here we're implementing activities that, is, that are optimizing the management of resources, uh, like dismantling and reuse of parts, recycling uh, components of the vehicle. The fourth pillar, restart, is the innovation and the training that are necessary for the three other pillars to be launched and with concrete activities on the side. Why am I presenting all this to you? is to, um, to let you know and, and possibly understand that the transformation is on. We are on uh, one of the first, um, I, I believe we are the first project in Europe and even in the world to implement concretely circular economy to deal with sustainability and environment uh, challenges that we need to face in the automotive industry. We do that with people. Because, and this is the second KPI of the project, the first one being to be profitable. The second one is we need to re-employ people that were um, employed in the plant. Uh, and as you can see, <clears throat> we, we used to have 75% of workers and 20% of technicians, which is globally uh, a, a very, very high majority of blue colors. So instead of shutting down the plant and, and, um, and just shutting everything and uh, putting people on the market, on the employment market, the second KPI of the project was decided by the board to keep people uh, within the site and to transform them, to, to train them, um, to uh, take the new jobs that could be created in the new activities. The projection of the people were 2000 more or less in 20 at the end of 2024. This is where we said we would create 2000 jobs um, at the end of 2024 to employ the 2000 people who would be um, still working in the plant. Uh, just to make you understand, at this stage, uh, we are reaching the end of 2023 and um, 1,070 and 700 people have more or less been uh, transferred. This means that we needed to uh, put in place a huge plan of trainings and this is why we launched also um, the plant a campus that was that is also dedicated to circular economy for mobility and that is uh, unique by the place where it is located and um, the type of educational and industrial resources that it can gather and offer to the publics uh, that we need to train for the future of the automotive industry, including in circular economy and sustainability. We have uh, targeted five audiences so that it is a, a global partnership and a real ecosystem in itself so that the skills, as Thomas was mentioned, not only the jobs that are designed, but the skills that we need for people uh, with their own profiles uh, coming to training. So we're not talking about, uh, not only talking about jobs, but really about skills that people hold or not uh, for um, the, uh, the perspective of the new jobs. Uh, we have um, actually out of the five audiences, what I would insist on is are the two the two major ones are the two first one of course the academy, academic education. Uh, we open training modules for students from the um, um, 
CAP is a, is a level um, is is a low level and up to the master in engineering, and we also offer professional trainings for the the, the training modules for adults and professionals, blue and white colors. It's a mix of all these publics that also is the richness and can prepare the, 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 the best, I would say, to the new type of jobs that um, um, the automotive industry, uh, I'm, I'm really focusing on industry, will uh, we'll need to create. Here is the last slide I wanted to share with you so that it's a little bit more concrete and that you probably foresee what the skills are that we are preparing behind what I, I just presented. Uh, we have skills um, and we need to train people and to make uh, people understand what circular economy is. This, this is what we call initiation, because you cannot transform a site, you cannot pull people or lead or people uh, going into new jobs if they don't understand the, the new models and concepts that are behind the sustainability that we all talk about or that we all hear about. So we have a few modules that are really uh, the fundamentals and uh, the basics. We have a number of technical trainings thanks to um, uh, location thanks to one building that is quite massive and which is able to um, actually um, uh, train people on in real condition so it's kind of a, a smaller size of what you can find on the on the flow and the, in the plant and there we can train people and especially blue colors to reparation and renovation, recycling and dismantling parts, energy sorry, solution. Um, so very concretely working on the batteries, on the parts, on the materials, and also on a more um, on another level and support function about recommendation and concept and uh, eco design. We have cross trainings um, for the support function to do, and uh, this is what, what we do. And we also do new jobs orientation, and this is uh, with what I will end my, uh, my short presentation. We have orientation for people because most of the time, beyond the skills and the, and the trainings, beyond the jobs, uh, we need to embark people and to make them understand how to um, to orient themselves. Uh, most of them, what we observe on the plant, are um, lost and, and, of course, worried with the future of the sector. Um, though uh, new opportunities um, raise, uh, especially and in, in including for them. So um, it's important to make, to let them know how they can find their own way. And, um, and it's important for us, of course, in, in terms of uh, job hiring to uh, position um, people in the best way with the orientation service. This is something we do in partnership with the region Ile-de-France that I thank, by the way, <laughs> and a number of other uh, industrial, academics and, and, uh, and other institutional partners that you have on on the screen. Here we are. I don't know if you have question and, and if it's... Um, Thank you very much. I'll remain for later on. Yes, uh, we want that also to remind the uh, attendees that they can leave their questions in the chat. So if you have any questions, maybe you can leave them in the chat and we will... Uh, the, the speakers will answer them after. But right now we're going uh, to the presentation of Navarra. The Department of Education of the Government of Navarra will explain uh, their practices. Good morning. I am Sonia Garcia, Director of the Qualification and Vocational Training Project Service. First, uh, thank you for the opportunity to be here today sharing our experience. With me is Cristina, responsible for Erasmus Vocational Training Project in Navarra. 
As her English is better than mine, so it will be Christina who will make the, the presentation. Christina, please. Thank you, Sonia. We're going to share our screen as well because we have a presentation ready. So. Okay. Can you see it? Yes. Perfect. Yes. All right. Perfect. Well, uh, before starting with our educational system, I would like to speak a little bit about our context, the context uh, of our region. We are in the north of Spain, so we are in the border with France, and that gives us a very powerful location from a strategic and logistic point of view. That's why we have the third highest per capita income in Spain and one of the lowest unemployment rates in our country. And uh, education and training has always been one of our main priorities. Uh, we, uh, we firmly believe in the importance of having a close relationship with our companies so that we can know their demands and their needs. And uh, therefore, our 37 vocational training centers are highly focused on the needs of the, our regional economy. Because one of our objectives, obviously, in education is to booster the region's economic and social development. Our economy is, uh, has six outstanding economic sectors, being the automotive industry and immobility, our first and most important sector. Actually, 6% of our it, it accounts for 6% of our regional GDP. We have more than 120 companies and more than 100 suppliers in relation to this industry, about 13,000 jobs, and centers specializing in R&D. And one of the main reasons why this industry is so strong in our area is because we have Volkswagen Navarra, and it is one of the most productive plants in the VW group in the world. And of course, one of our main uh, employment providers. Apart from automotive industry, we have agricultural food industry, uh, renewable energies, health, sustainable tourism, and audiovisual industry. These six economic sectors are integrated in our S4 strategy, Smart Specialization Strategies for Sustainability. So our six, uh, these six sectors uh, um, are aimed at improving our sustainability and digitalization. We are so focusing, we are so focused on the S4 strategy that at the moment we are participating in a, in a K82 Erasmus Plus project called Aries 4. We are working with our public university and three other countries, which are Sweden, Denmark, and Bulgaria. And so while you are going to have uh, access to this presentation, if you are curious or you want to know more about this project, you have the link in here, in, in the website here, okay? If you want to know more about it. And after this short introduction, I'm going to focus now on our educational system. As you can see here, we have the map, and well, let's say that most of our vet education and training centers are in our capital, but as you can see, we have some others around, because one of the objectives we have in our education system is to avoid depopulation. So we try to help students stay in their own areas, uh, studying wherever they want. We have two national reference centers. One of them is, uh, focused, is focused on health and the other one on renewable energies. And we have three centers of excellence. We have CA Agroforestal, uh, which mainly deals with agri-food industries. Tipton Ivane, which mainly deals with um, automated production. And the Virgen del Camino, which deals with uh, electronics. The three of them are in the, cap are in the capital. Here you have some numbers to understand how uh, our vocational training and education works. Well, let's say it's quite impressive, impressive to know that our area is quite small and still we still have, uh, we still have 24 professional families. And more than 14,000 students choose to study vet uh, education. Actually, our schools are complaining about the lack of space because because the number of students applying for this kind of education is, is going up all the time. Our system works in grades. We have five grades, being A, the lowest grade, uh, which works with partial accreditation, partial accreditation of competences, 
and level E, grade E, which is the highest, which would be specialization courses. Now I am going to focus on level D because this is our actual uh, schools work with this level. We have basic, intermediate, and higher education in the in grade D. And I'm going to say a couple of things of each of them. Basic degree courses take two years, two courses. It's targeted at students who are 15 years old or older and have not finished their ordinary secondary education in, in, in the ordinary path. When they finish, they have a basic technician qualification. And we have to mention that in the south of Navarra, in one school called ETI, we have a basic degree course on vehicle maintenance. So that will be the first contact our youngest students have got with, with this industry. When you have a basic technician qualification, you can apply directly to do an intermediate level course, which takes other two years. The qualification you get at the end is a uh, division. And we have to mention three schools, three vet schools in, in, in Navarra, who offer motor vehicle electric, uh, electromechanics. And one of the modules that you can see here is maintenance of hybrid electric and hydrogen vehicles. If you have the qualification of technician, you can opt to go, uh, you can opt to, go to higher level courses, which is other two years. The qualification you get is higher technician. And we want to mention in our capital because it's uh, the it's one school which offers higher uh, the qualification of higher education in motor vehicles and one of the modules offered in these studies is hybrid electric and hydrogen vehicles and that would be grade D. if a student wants to deepen their knowledge they can opt to do a grade e which is a specialization course in one of our schools, we have in Virgen del Camino, we have a specialization course of maintenance of hybrid. So with this, I would want to emphasize the fact that uh, from the basic degree up to the top degree in vet education, which is grade E, there is a contact with this industry and there is the and students have the option to study uh, everything about hybrid, uh, hybrid and electric vehicles. This is not the only way a person can access to this kind of knowledge. We are doing about formal channels. So uh, our students uh, normally go to school in which they do vocational training in the educational system and they finally get a vet qualification. But we also have another path for, uh, for people employed or unemployed who cannot spend six hours at school, for example, they have vocational training for employment. At the end of this training, they get a professional certificate. But also, we have no formal channels because some uh, some people have been working for a long time in an area, and they can prove some, some expertise just through work experience. So these people can have an accreditation of competence to be competent units. They are a community, so if they get different accreditations, they can go to a, they can get a professional certificate. And if they do a certain amount of modules, they can finally get a qualification. This is important because we are we we believe that it's really important to give everybody the option to uh, update themselves and to con to expand their knowledge on a certain field. Uh, this competence was acquired by the Department of Education, and uh, what we try to do is uh, have an a variety, a varied and a wide offer all throughout the area, all throughout Navarra. Uh, we have to thank our public subsidized and private centers because they open their doors and they offer their buildings and their facilities to offer these kind of courses and training for, for students and for adults who can maybe go in the evening and acquire these, uh, these, these certifications. And the studies we offer are modular flexible, cumulative, and credible. This is important because it's not necessary to finish a whole course to have something accredited. Here you have uh, the nine training actions that we have taken out, uh, we have carried out uh, so far. They are courses between 30 and 60, 60 hours. Altogether, they, all, uh, 
they all add up to 480 hours. And we have around 160 people have been trained in these in this training actions. And they are all in relation to electric vehicles. Well, obviously, we cannot offer a high quality uh, teaching, a high quality qualification if we don't have updated uh, teachers. So, one of our, um, one of our most um, top priorities as well is to offer teachers uh, courses to keep them updated and to keep them informed of the evolution of, of the economy. So, here we have some examples of the offer course that. Uh, and that we that we had last in the year 22-23. And here in formal courses, for example, in the year 1920, we have a course for teachers called Introduction to Electric Vehicles. And this was to meet the demand of teachers who wanted to, to, to give their knowledge on, on, on this field. And then in the year 2021, there was another course for teachers based on electric vehicle and the charging system. We also participate in innovation projects, the, and there is a really call for these projects. And here, as you can see, in 2007 already, one of our schools uh, applied for a hybrid vehicle project. And this was to train students and professionals in the automotive sector in hybrid technology, adapting the components of this technology to teaching. Finally, uh, just uh, a small comment on our international projects, because we also uh, we firmly believe in the importance of sharing our knowledge with other countries, and of course, uh, going to different countries, see how they work, and import uh, ideas. And in our international projects, we uh, we try to promote mobilities for both teachers and students. For teachers, we have two types of mobilities. We have they can go individually to do a job shadowing or a course the teachers might be interested in, or we also offer uh, group mobilities based on a specific topic. For example, this year, uh, different groups of teachers are going to Europe to to widen their knowledge on dual system or uh, special uh, education or. Uh, and one of the one of the ideas that have come up lately uh, to to do one of these mobilities would be uh, something about the electric car. Maybe going to other countries to, to see how you are working with with, with, this, with this topic and try to learn from from other countries. And that would be all. Thank you very much. Sorry. Perfect. That will be over. Thank you, Sonia, and thank you, Cristina. So now, uh, Sergio Perez Garcia, Director General of External Action of Government of Navarra, will close this event. Thank you, Cristina. Can you hear me properly? Yes. Okay. So thank you, Cristina. Thank you all. Uh, first, before closing, I would like to know if uh, there's any questions or you have uh, raised your hands or either you have... Um, Put your questions on the on the chat, and if not, I will proceed to closing the event. So I assume that there are no, yeah, Thomas, please go ahead. Yes, uh, uh, I have a question to uh, Sylvie because I found your presentation fascinating. For my question is, how does the Renault Group see your activities? Is it an example for other, um, let's say, transformations in the group, or is it something completely outside and connected to it? Can you, because we have uh, two other presentations very much looking at the local and regional government side, what they're doing. How uh, can you say a bit how you work together with the region of Ile de France in this transformation? Because of course, the role of cities and regions is our main main uh, question. So I would be very interested in that. Thank you for the question, Thomas. It's it's in fact um, a very um, important topic for us and a very important question for us to be uh, linked and connected to the the whole territories and the institutions and um, especially the region, um, because we need in this project to have the full support of institutionals and especially the region. 
uh, the region was um, at the beginning a little bit mistrustful, I would say, um, as the others players or actors were, because um, it's quite a challenging project that we have launched. And it was not said at the beginning that um, it would be a success. A success. It is still not. <laughs> I am very, um, you know, I, I, I need to, um, to say that um, we will see at the end of next year where we are. So far, it's so far so good. But still, we have um, a number of... Um, how can I say, a number of surprises on the way. Um, so the region was a, a, of strong support in terms of uh, industrial activities development and also, of course, about the skills. If asking me um, if it was um, a goal of Renault or if it was um, part of the strategy of the group, uh, to make it a pilot and then to duplicate it um, externally, it was not at the beginning because, again, we were absolutely not sure of the um, the road we would um, take and, and the roadblocks we would have. So it was too challenging at the beginning, I believe, and this is my answer, um, for making it from, from the start. Uh, something huge that would, you know, um, reconsider all the strategy of the group or everything. It is still a pilot, interesting for the group, interesting also for our competitors um, who visit us very frequently and, um, and ask us and bench us, actually, because we are, again, one of the, of the first ones, I believe, to have lunch at this level, at, at scale, uh, something um, industrial uh, with um, a, a, such a transformation, including a uh, circular economy. Did I answer? <laughs> okay. Okay, so if there are no more questions, yeah, I, I personally, I found it also all the presentations very interesting but yours especially Sylvie because we here in Navarra we are also working on circular economy processes for the remanufacturing and especially in the automotive industry indeed we are submitting a proposal for the European circular innovation values on the circular economy but this is a topic that maybe it will uh, need uh, another presentations so in the context of the European week of regions and cities that is started this week and we are very happy we are here in Brussels uh, this week and as Thomas said at the very beginning this is the first event that we are also organizing and participating we have enough time to exchange and to learn from other regions and that's the main um, objective of this um, of this uh, seminar that we organize it the regions that we have been uh, working with uh, Lombardia and also Ile de France are not randomly we are Navarra very um, committed with the automotive industry because as you know, uh, we are leading uh, next month, uh, we are taking uh, the leading of the Automotive Regions Alliance, this lobby that was created at the Committee of Regions with the Corai and the Cotter Group, and uh, Mrs. Chivite is uh, going to take the uh, this uh, leading for, for, for one year, and we expect all the all the regions involved in this alliance in, in Navarra, the next 8th and 9th of November, just uh, in a month. And also we kindly invite two other regions to join us and uh, these regions that are uh, mainly uh, focused on automotive industry, such as Navarra. We are a region with 30% of our GDP, which is uh, industrial. It's very, um, very high level of, of industry that is in our region. And we are also working on the uh, making the automotive industry more competitive. In our case, we have the Volkswagen Group, uh, one plant there that has already mentioned that um, 1,000 million euros are going to be invested in order to change the fossil vehicle into the electric mobility. So that's why we are also working hand in hand in order to, to get it real. Uh, as uh, my colleagues from the educational department has already explained, we are not waiting for this investment to come. We have already started uh, training those students and those, those people who are uh, 
starting to um, reskill themselves uh, because of this new reality, uh, this electric vehicle and new ways of uh, mobilities. And uh, this is very important, very special, uh, important, especially this year, which was declared by the European President of the European Commission, President von der Leyen, this is the 2023 European Year of Skills. And that's what we are doing uh, through the educational department, also with the working um, Navarrese employment uh, um, uh, organization. And, and that's what we are uh, trying to do, train the people who are uh, needed to reskill themselves. Um, working hand in hand with the industry, especially automotive industry, in order to make it um, more feasible, this uh, transition, this ecological transition, and also in the third part, working as external action service uh, by lobbying, by creating this, um, leading these European institutions, also the Route 35 that already mentioned it, and also legislative power of the Euro 7 legislation, and now with the Automotive Region Alliance that we are taking the leading uh, next month. So that's all for the moment. I would like to finish in by thank you all the speakers for today, Sylvie, Folco, Thomas, and Sonia, and, and the colleagues uh, for being with us today. Also the um, people who have decided to join us, uh, just to let you know that the, all the presentations will be made available in the delegation of the government of Navarra office in Brussels. So just uh, check it later in a couple of minutes or maybe in a couple of days. And thank you again for your participation. I hope you have a very good and successful um, European Week of Regions and Cities. We remain at your disposal for any questions that you may need, any regional collaboration with Navarra, we are more than happy to contribute it. And also uh, we wait for you on the next month in Pamplona, 8th and 9th of November, the Automotive Region Alliance second high level political meeting will take place. Thank you. Thank you.